This is a revision video for AQA GCSE Combined Science. These are pure factual recall questions based upon specification for Biology Unit 5, as recalling facts makes up 40% of the marks in GCSE Science. Since this is a really big unit, I've split out just the Combined Science questions, which you can find in the link in the description. There'll be a separate video coming soon for the Triple Science content. Homeostasis is the regulation of the conditions inside either a cell or an organism in order to maintain optimum conditions in response to changes both inside the cell and outside the cell. It's important for enzymes because it keeps the conditions optimal and this prevents the enzymes from being denatured. Inside the human body, homeostasis controls blood glucose concentration, water content and also temperature. Homeostasis is maintained by the nervous system and the endocrine system, which is the system of glands that make hormones, and this is sometimes called a chemical response. Each control system is made up of receptors, a coordination centre and effectors. The brain, spinal cord and pancreas are all examples of coordination centres, and what they do is they receive information from the receptors and then they process this. A stimulus is a change in the environment. The rods and cones in the retina detect light, the nose and tongue detect chemicals, and the receptors in your skin detect pain, pressure and change in temperature. Your skin can't actually tell whether it's hot or cold, but what it can tell is whether the temperature is increasing or decreasing. This is why if you put one of your hands in hot water and one of your hands in cold water, and then you put them both into the same bucket of warm water, the hand that was hot will feel cold, and the hand that was cold will feel hot, even though they're in the same temperature. Effector organs can be either glands or muscles. Effector organs are responsible for bringing about responses which restore the optimum levels of those conditions. That's a bit of a mouthful, but it is the explanation that's given in your specification. When a muscle is responding to a stimulus, it contracts, and when a gland is responding to a stimulus, it secretes a hormone. Information is transported by the nervous system as electrical impulses, and the gaps between neurons are called synapses. To get across the synapses, the signal is transmitted in the form of a chemical called a neurotransmitter, and this can diffuse across the synapse. Nerves are also known as neurons, and the CNS is the central nervous system. It's made up of the brain and the spinal cord. In order for you to respond to any change in the environment, there's firstly a stimulus, which is detected by a receptor. This passes the information to a coordination centre, which triggers an effector organ to bring about a response. The three types of neuron are sensory neurons, relay neurons and motor neurons. A reflex is an automatic, rapid response often used to protect you, something like blinking or snatching your hand away from a really hot object. Reflex actions are different from conscious actions, firstly because they're automatic, so they don't involve the conscious part of the brain, and secondly because they are much more rapid. You could be asked to describe any of your reflex reactions, but the overall pattern is still the same, you just need to change the names of things like the stimulus and where the receptor cells are. So firstly, the stimulus, which in this instance is light, is detected by a receptor, which in this instance is in the retina of the eye. The receptor then generates an electrical impulse, and this passes along the sensory neuron to the relay neuron, which is in the spinal column. That relay neuron takes the electrical impulse and it passes it to the motor neuron, and this passes it on to the effector. And in this instance, the effector are going to be the muscles in the iris in the eye. Those muscles contract, and this causes the pupil to get smaller so that less light gets in and your eye is not damaged. To carry out the ruler drop test, you need two people, one person to take the test and one person to administer the test. The participant is going to rest their arm on the desk and this will stop their hand from moving during the test. Then the partner positions a meter ruler so that the zero centimeter mark is in line with the participant's finger and thumb, ready to catch it. Without saying anything, without counting down, without giving them any warning at all, the partner drops the ruler and the participant tries to catch it as quickly as possible. The partner then measures the distance between zero centimetres where the ruler started and the point where the participant caught the ruler. They can then use a table that compares distances and reaction times to work out what the person's reaction time was. 
This experiment should be repeated more than once to look for repeatability and identify any anomalous results. If you're using the ruler drop test to work out something like the impact of caffeine or classical music on reaction time, then you would then need to do the test again having changed this independent variable. So this could be the same people who do the test once and then afterwards you give them some coffee and you get them to do it again. Or you could have two separate groups of people, one of whom have just drunk water and one of whom have drunk a caffeinated beverage. The ruler drop test isn't a reflex because it involves conscious thought or the conscious part of your brain. So therefore it's not automatic. If you test reaction times using a computer instead, then you remove the possibility that the person administering the test might give away that they're about to drop the ruler. So there's no way that you could know in advance that it was going to happen. However, it may not be practical to get enough computers for everybody to use or to have the right software, and this may just be too expensive to make it work. A gland is a group of cells that secrete a substance, for instance, a hormone. You need to be able to identify the pituitary gland in the brain, which is just behind the bridge of the nose, the thyroid gland in the neck, the adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, the pancreas, and then depending on the sex of the person, either the testes or the ovaries. A hormone is a chemical messenger made out of protein and secreted by a gland. It's carried in the bloodstream to a target organ. The master gland is the pituitary gland. This secretes LH, FSH and ADH. The pancreas secretes insulin and glucagon. If you're taking foundation tier, you don't need to know about glucagon, it's just higher tier content. The thyroid gland secretes thyroxine. Thyroxine stimulates the basal metabolic rate, and this means it's really important for growth. If you don't have enough thyroxine, then you might not be as tall as you would have been otherwise. The adrenal glands secrete adrenaline and they're stimulated in times of fear or stress. They cause a fight or flight response. So for instance, your heart rate increases, um, you breathe faster, so there's increased delivery of oxygen and also glucose to the brain and the muscles. The ovaries secrete estrogen and also progesterone and the testes secrete testosterone. Both thyroxine and adrenaline are controlled by negative feedback. Blood glucose concentration is controlled by the pancreas, and this is important both to maintain regular energy levels and also to protect your cells from osmotic shock. Insulin reduces the level of glucose in the blood, and when insulin is produced, glucose is then absorbed by the liver and also by the muscles, and it's converted into glycogen, which is insoluble. So it doesn't dissolve and it will stay in your cells without changing the water potential and causing any water to move in or out. Diabetes is a chronic illness, which means you have it for your whole life. And if you have diabetes, then your body is unable to control the levels of glucose in the blood. If you have type 1 diabetes, then your body stops producing insulin or doesn't produce enough insulin. Whereas if you have type 2 diabetes, then your body doesn't respond to insulin. Being obese is a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. If you're taking higher tier, then you need to know that to increase the level of glucose in the blood, the pancreas produces glucagon. Secondary sexual characteristics are all those things that happen as part of puberty. So for males, it includes growing facial hair and the voice changing. For females, it includes growing breasts. And for both sexes, it includes the growth of pubic hair and underarm hair. The main male reproductive hormone is testosterone whereas females have LH, FSH, oestrogen and progesterone. LH and FSH are produced by the pituitary gland in the brain and oestrogen and progesterone are produced by the ovaries. Ovulation is the process of an egg being released from one of the ovaries and the menstrual cycle lasts approximately 28 days on average. Obviously there's a huge amount of variation in actual everyday life but that's the number that you need to know for the exam board. FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone, causes an egg in the ovary to mature. Luteinizing hormone, or LH, stimulates the release of an egg. Oestrogen and progesterone are responsible for the uterus lining being maintained. Both FSH and LH levels peak around day 14 of the cycle, because FSH is responsible for the egg maturing, and then LH is responsible for it being released. Oestrogen peaks a little while before this, so it's responsible for stimulating LH production and also inhibiting FSH production so that you only get one egg released per cycle. 
and then progesterone peaks at the end of the cycle, ensuring that there is a full uterus lining for the egg to implant in. Contraception is the process of avoiding fertilisation. Slow release progesterone can be used as an injection, as an implant, as a skin patch or as an IUS, also known as the Mirena coil. Oral contraceptives contain either progesterone and oestrogen together or just progesterone, that's what we call the mini pill, and these work to inhibit FSH production so that no eggs mature. Barrier methods include condoms, femidons and also the diaphragm. Abstaining is when you don't have sex at all. When choosing a method of contraception, you need to bear in mind the reliability, how well does it work, the availability, can you get it when you need it, the health implications of taking it, any ethical or religious views, and also the economics, how expensive is this method of contraception. Fertility drugs contain FSH and LH. IVF is in vitro fertilisation. The mother is given FSH and LH and the eggs are fertilised by sperm in a laboratory. When the embryos are a tiny ball of cells, they're implanted into the mother. Unfortunately, fertility treatment is emotionally and physically stressful. It has a low success rate and it can lead to multiple births, which is dangerous both for the children and for the mother. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this useful in your revision for GCSE Biology Paper 2. If you're taking triple science, I'll have another video with the triple content soon. If you did find this one useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe so that you receive notifications for the rest of these recall question videos.